Hi everybody, Cat here. Welcome to my channel. Well, recently there has been a lot of commentary online, in the press, by royal commentators, the establishment, and YouTubers regarding a couple of things. The Crown, for one, and Harry's upcoming book for another and everybody's up in arms oh my gosh it's the worst thing ever how could the crown do this to charles the queen just died this is terrible well we gotta look at this in a different manner one thing i've noticed is there is a huge amount of blind deference amongst the public, the establishment, and the press towards Charles and the royal family. You know, the king can do no wrong. How could, how could Netflix do such a thing and be so hurtful? It's wrong. We should cancel our Netflix. We shouldn't watch The Crown. That's cancel culture. You can't just cancel something because you don't want to hear it. Let's look at the crown. Of course, we know it is a dramatization of events regarding the royal family. Every conversation isn't going to be verbatim. Of course, they had to build up some dialogue. They weren't in the room when these things happened. But there are some basic truths in it and basic events that really did happen that even though Charles and the rest of the royal family and the establishment would rather shove under the rug so we don't think about it, well, you know, that's just not the way life works. In, I think it was episode three or something of The Crown, they introduced Penelope Natchbull, um, who is a second cousin, I think, to, to King Charles. Well, at the time, she was in her early 20s, and Philip was already 50 years old. They developed a friendship. Everybody's up in arms. How could Netflix even insinuate that Philip had an affair? Well, I'll tell you. Pretty much the whole marriage of uh, Philip and the Queen, there was rumor of many affairs of him, some more well-known than others. But this particular instance, we'll just stick to just one thing at a time. They developed a friendship. Was it an affair? Was it physical? Was it an affair of the heart? Or was it just a deep, abiding friendship? We don't know. And it doesn't really matter. But the point is, they had a friendship that lasted all of Philip's life. In fact, at 90 years old, when he retired from public service and moved to Wood Farm, he didn't stay living with the Queen. He moved to Wood Farm on the Windsor Estate. And you know who was his constant companion at Wood Farm? It was Penelope Natchbull. In fact, at Prince Philip's funeral, which we remember was uh, at the height of the COVID restrictions, the Queen sitting there alone, everybody masked up, only 50 people were invited to attend the funeral. Penelope Natchbull had pride of place within the congreg congregation of the 50. The queen knew enough that she was important enough to Prince Philip as she had spent his last days with him, his last years with him. 
who knew enough and was respectful enough to invite her to the funeral. That says something. So whether it was an affair, whether it was a friendship, it lasted for years and it was a very important relationship in Philip's life. But oh my, can't mention it on Netflix because we can't denigrate the memory of Prince Philip. We can't do that. It's too hurtful to the royal family. You have to grow up, folks. Another thing everybody's talking about in The Crown is, oh my God, the way they portrayed uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles, um, was terrible. They made him look like such a mean and nasty man and the way they portrayed Camilla. Well, I'll tell you, at the time, the Diana years, when this was going on, Charles wasn't a very nice man. Camilla wasn't very nice. The two of them, along with their friends and the establishment, <coughs> and to <coughs> a large degree the press, were gaslighting Diana. Rumors and stories they were putting out, oh, she's crazy, she needs to be locked up, she's got mental disturbance, they were trying to ruin her reputation. And so be it, you know, if Netflix wants to portray things realistically, they can't gloss over that. They can't gloss over that kind of behavior just because... Angela Levin says, oh my gosh, this is terrible and how dare they do it and it's hurtful to the king and the crown should be pulled from Netflix and it's, it's a travesty. It's this kind of blind deference to the royal... Sorry, there's a little fly. This blind deference to the royal family that I think is almost dangerous because it puts blinders on you and you can't see the truth. You don't want to accept the truth. And if you can't look at the truth, you'll never get to the bottom of what's really going on or why things are happening. So their portrayal wasn't great. Oh, well, their behavior wasn't great at the time. And, of course, Charles and Camilla would rather you forget what happened. And there's a lot of young people now that are acolytes of Charles because of his stance on climate change and these sorts of things. He doesn't want to lose that support. Most of them weren't around 35 years ago. They don't know what happened. So when you get these royal reporters and, you know, coming on, t on their podcasts and things and interviews and saying, you know, it's, it's terrible, terrible the way they're portraying them. Netflix is, you know, the crown is, it's just full of lies. So these young people, you know, they're trying to make sure that they don't, they don't understand what really happened at the time. They're trying to obfuscate history. They're trying to rewrite history or ignore the bad bits. That sounds like cancel culture to me. And we can't engage in that. So, the crown, yeah, they've they're using real events. And even though it might be unsavory to think about these things or talk about these things, I don't think we need to be worried about offending Charles. He's a big boy. He knows what he did. And, you know, 
we don't need to give him that blind deference and say, oh, we can just sweep all that under the rug. You can't do it. Even the tawdry tampon gate part in the in the in the series that really happened at the time i've heard the transcripts or heard the tape recording i've read the transcripts yeah it was a tawdry little thing between two lovers and everybody was horrified at the time don't forget at the time Diana's whole squidgy gate phone scandal thing came out too. But what was happening at the time, um, throughout the first maybe eight, nine years of the Wales's marriage, the press knew something was wrong. But in deference to the royal family, they kept it quiet and they fed us the lie that everything was fine. It wasn't until Charles and Diana themselves blew the lid on their marriage by their, uh, n their interviews and their books that the press knew it was open season and they started really reporting on what was going on. The press had those tapes two years before they were ever published. They knew that the whole fairy tale marriage was a lie, but they weren't allowed to report on it. So the th fact that 35 years later, Netflix is coming out and giving an account of this, how... How can you sit there and say, oh, this is terrible and they shouldn't do it? These things happened. Charles and Camilla, despite all the royal trappings, are real people. And because of his position, he could do what he wanted. And they did. And that's just a fact. You can't put blinders on it. You can't sweep it under the rug. So watch Netflix. You might learn something. Things that the press doesn't want you to know. Even though this has all been hashed over 35 years ago, now they're trying to sweep it under the rug again. That's the way it goes, and that's the power the royal family has over the people who just bow down and give blind deference to the royal family and its members. That's got to stop. It's time to face reality, folks. Now, the second thing that everybody's talking about is the anticipation of all the horrible lies and whining and isn't he ungrateful... Prince Harry's book, The Spare. How could he do it? This man is one of the most privileged guys in the world, grew up great. Everybody's lost a family member at some point. How can he just get this book and whine and complain and it's going to be full of lies and it's going to be so hurtful to Charles and Camilla so hurtful to the queen. How dare he? Well, like father, like son. Oh, it's going to look backwards. The Prince of Wales wrote a very hefty tome with um, Jonathan Dimbleby, who also did the companion interview with Charles. In this book, you want to talk about denigrating the queen and being whiny and miserable. Charles was like, 
And he, he was the same age. Pre he was 46 when he wrote this book. Harry's what now? 40, 41? Pretty much the same age. Everybody's saying to Harry, Oh, grow up. You're a grown man. Stop your whining. Charles complained that the Queen and Prince Philip were uncaring, neglectful, dismissive, non-supportive to him. They didn't treat him great. She wasn't a good mother. He was a cruel father. Charles said it. But somehow we have a big problem with Harry saying it. Charles said it, and the royal reporters, when they talk about Harry in his book, they never mention this one. They never mention this one. It's like it never existed. It's like the cancel culture again. Oh, well, that was a bad time. We're not going to mention one of the biggest mistakes Charles made. At the time, the, ro the reporters were saying, oh, he shouldn't have ever done this. This was a mistake. It was hurtful to the queen. It was hurtful to Prince Philip. Charles should never have done this. But somehow now, you know, we're not even... Talking about he did the same thing that we're expecting out of Harry. And, you know, I'm not surprised that Harry's writing this book. The way they grew up was very odd. Uh, they have this deference paid to them by the public and the press just by virtue of the fact that they're high-ranking members of the royal family. On the other hand, even Charles said it. Because you're not the top person, queen or king as he is now, if you're not the top job, you really don't matter in the scheme of things. So on one hand, they have all this privilege and deference. On the other hand, they're dismissed, ignored. Charles was trying for years to do something with his life. The Pellis planner's um, attitude was basically, well, he doesn't need to do anything. And they did the same thing they did with Harry give him little projects, keep him under wraps, try to keep him busy. Well, when Charles retired from the uh, Navy, he used his severance pay to set up the Prince's Trust. And this is something that he had been discussing with his mother, the Queen, for a long time. She didn't want him to do it, because in her mind, it would overshadow the work that Prince Philip's trust, the Duke of Edinburgh, um, it would overshadow his work. So Charles had no place. It was basically, shut up and keep your place. You're not important. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. You don't need to do anything. He fought against that, and he built the trust anyway. And it wasn't till about 30 years later that the Queen actually, in a speech in public, acknowledged that and said she was proud of the work that he had done. But at the time, shut up, sit down, know your place. You don't make a spectacle of yourself. And the same thing with Harry. So you can understand how it can happen to Charles, how it can happen to Harry. They had all this deference and privilege, but even within their own family at the time, they weren't considered important. 
they really weren't. And that's got to be kind of a hell of a way to grow up. That's got to twist your psyche a little bit. So I can see how it happens. But the fact that now, Harry's the bad guy. Netflix is the bad guy. Nothing, you know, nothing the Queen or Prince Philip or Charles has ever done. Oh my God, we can't talk about that. That's horrible. You don't want to hurt their feelings. It's terrible. Oh, it's not. It's reality. And you got to face up to reality. You got to take the blinders off. You got to quit this cancel culture. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. I just want to give my blind devotion to the monarchy. It's time to wake up. Have a great day, everybody. Like and subscribe. And I really want to hear your comments about this. Let's get the conversation going. Bye for now.